Good evening, and welcome to another episode of Varen Time. Before we get started, I want to do a quick shout out to our sponsor, D&D Beyond, an online digital tool set built for players and DMs alike to keep track of their uh, NPCs, their characters, their weapons, and more importantly, their health points. So if you need anything when it comes to D&D, I recommend D&D Beyond. Now, last session, players took a Jonathan Teller to a rather uh, interesting cave that was filled with uh, some rough terrain, but nothing too crazy, where they ran into a hag by the name of Myrtle. Quickly, they realized that this hag was part of a coven, and our own Emerald made a deal with said hag to hand over the Hearthstone, Jonathan Tiller, in exchange for releasing the town of Colden. The issue is, not quite sure what that deal had in store. You'll we'll pick up from there. Let's bring him out. All right. Hello. I'll... Can I throw that owl? I just, I can't get past it. I'm sorry. I like it so much. <laughs> like my owl. It's amazing. So, anyway, we left off. Answer. It's foul. It's foul. Yeah. It came up right after. You got banned thoroughly for it too. Oh, we're going with it, and I've already been punished for your pun. Damn it, Kevin! <laughs> I caught the stream. Anyway, sorry, apologize. <laughs> so, when we left off, Emerald, you had just made the deal with Myrtle. She snapped her fingers. The l Everything just goes blind with light as y'all find yourselves instantly outside the cave. Jonathan Tiller is missing. Rather late in the evening, I would say it's Roughly around 7.30. You guys are outside the cave, like, looking at the entrance. It's about 7.30 in the evening. He's not around you guys. So we, like, just, like, bammed right outside of the cave? Yeah. What I'm saying is, when you made the deal with Myrtle, the night hack, and she snapped her fingers, the lights like a blinding light was sent out and y'all find yourselves instantly outside the cave. Jonathan Tiller is missing. He's not around you guys. And it's around 7.30 in the evening. You guys... Correct. <laughs> well, honestly, this seems like a resounding success free the village got rid of the guy that bamboozled the hags and we get to go and potentially raid his mansion of fun toys and we live yes that is important <laughs> shall we raid the mansion of fun toys I'd like to see what bacon. I've been muted. Brilliant. I would say that the conversation that you had previously, as soon as they made the deal, they would have just been sure and snapped. I don't think you had been able to ask a question. I have two out of game questions then, because apparently I was muted. Um, cool. What time did we go in the cave? Y'all were early morning, roughly, or like between the hours of eight and ten. Oh, that's right. And that. is Fida still wearing the amulet? 
The one from Jonathan Teller's place? Yeah. The one that was on his One person. that was removed from him. <clears throat> yeah. You saw the end. So, what is it that y'all are doing? I think we should head back to the town and yes, let's go to the mansion. But uh, Jonathan's not here. See what other things he may have there. Cautiously. Agreed. Oh, yes, it'd be Indeed. nice to verify that they've actually been released from their curse. I'm a little. Were you scared? There were three. Then. What happened? What will happen to Jonathan? Death? Probably not. At least not yet. No. They Respect. hold grudges. So. Oh. So. Respect. Yes, they hold grudges very heavily. Do not cross one like he did. Would not wish. Especially, you saw what happened from him crossing it by himself. The whole town suffered. Yes. Called consequences. Yes. I understand. There are boundaries. For everything. Yes. I assume we're walking and talking at this point. Okay. So you guys are walking and talking back to the town. Which, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it took y'all eight hours, roughly, to get to this location. So you guys are going... It was a... Yeah, because we camped, and then it yeah. still took us a few hours, I think, to reach the cave. Yeah. Like, y'all walked for, like, three or four hours, then stopped, uh, camped out, and then picked up the next day. So I take it you guys are going to camp out again as well? And we can do pretty much the After same thing. a little bit of travel. Make okay. half the I trip, mean, then camp. Yeah, so basically, we... camp out. Go ahead there. Are we feeling fatigued at all, as if the day had passed? Or is it just like, boom, you've been dropped from one point in time I... to another? I would say, I yeah. You... <laughs> <laughs> yes, I would say that you do feel slightly fatigued. Okay. There's the fair I was so say, I take y'all. If it's oh, like okay. we just crossed a time zone, Sophia would be more than willing to keep going. <laughs> so I take you guys are gonna get to about where y'all made camp last time and just camp there again for the evening, most likely. Sounds good okay. to me. All right. I would say that y'all easily find the campsite that y'all had camped at previously the night before. Uh, it's been undisturbed. Um, Hell, uh, the campfire where you guys had is still actually, uh, you see ashes, just a little bit of smoke every now and then kind of puffing out as the fire is ex fully extinguished, but just the heat still radiating from it. So this week that I left you. Hmm?
Here, don't worry. I'll cast an alarm around the camp that is an auditory alarm. <laughs> Just in case. Sephira will start tending the fire, getting the fire restarted, and then go find some food nearby if there is any. Great. So you do, uh, I'd like a survival from you there, Sephira. What's Cricket up to? Cricket's going to glance at that same direction, like last time, at the woods, where Tobor apparently was. Um, <laughs> so very, very curious. Um, and then little glances at Fida once in a while. Sixteen. But she's going to actually take um let's see which book what do I want to read? Oh you're doing that? Take? Your uh quick hunting trip there, Sephira was able to nab you a couple of rabbits. They able to quickly skin and eat and cook and eat. Okay. She will go ahead and start working on that. Okay. What book are you reading there? Cricket. I'm actually going to open up the Daughters of Zaldis. Daughters of Aldis? Oh, is it? Oh, is it Valdis? Oh, sorry. Yeah. I, My southern well, accent occasionally screws things up. I apologize. Valdis. Let me change that in my notes real quick. <laughs> what did you have? It, instead of, I put uh, Z A L D I S. Ah, that's okay. I understand. Val, I, can, Val, I can understand Val, that. Val and Zal. So. My bad. Okay, here we go. All good. Uh, who just typed in Aldous? There you go. Okay. I just had to change. A... <laughs> going great. <laughs> it's going Aldis. great. <laughs> Daughters of Aldi's. Of the what, just the passages that you read, the uh, chapter that you kind of like sink your teeth into discusses teeth. how Valdis is a rather um, when it comes to her as being a god, she sits back lets other spirits and beings kind of do her bidding for her. Two of which that it brings up is Morgana, the necromancer, and Shiva, the destroyer. It discusses how her relationship with her daughters, Morgana, was favorite, uh, favorited due to her how should i say ability to think not only strategically but tact uh, tactically when dealing with situations and how to get deals that were favorable not only for herself but for her mother it also discusses how morgano single-handedly took down the hunters of eternity a group created by Svala that were tasked with guarding the Feywild. Okay, pause. Sorry. Yep. That, <laughs> okay, that's all I'm... That's, created by... Yeah. Um... Svala. Uh, that would be, okay. if I'm not mistaken, Goss of Nature. Okay. Um, they were, okay, you can continue. Thank you. And they were just tasked with guarding the Feywild. Okay. Woo. Yeah. And as I mentioned before, Morgana just essentially obliterated the group. 
to non-existence. Got it. Okay. What is Fida up to? I am going to mostly take a look at the books that I have. The ritual one is of particular interest, and I'd like to ask Annabelle, like, a few questions about, like, I guess low-level spell casting, because I seem to have come into some abilities that are brand new to me, and I have no idea what I'm doing, and I don't really like starting another forest fire. Hey, spell casting yeah, training. <laughs> <laughs> so essentially, you want to take the time to dis uh, discuss with Tanithil low Start level spell figuring out what I can do because I have zero knowledge in this. I have like 12, 24 hours now, I think, of I can cast stuff. If I'm not mistaken, you do have cantrips, correct? Out of game. Mm -hmm. Okay. Doesn't uh, mean I know anything about them. <laughs> I'm brand new to this. That's actually what I was going to ask. Mm -hmm. uh, so, basically, you want to work with Tanthil to basically learn cantrips and first level spells. Yeah, to start figuring out what it is I can do, because this is not a good situation. I've stopped one forest fire I've started already. Well, I'm a DM to a certain extent. You two will play that out. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you have salient magical abilities, let's see what extent these actually go toward. Uh, um, maybe just a list of some basic cantrips. Can you uh, make light on an object? Focus very hard. Make light appear. You'll have to Does put it on an seem. external object. No? <laughs> I'm sorry, I had another hand that was underneath there. <laughs> <laughs> I picked up a rock and I'm trying this out. Does not seem so. Hmm. I've been um, able to control fire and like cast fire bolts. So point and shoot fire bolt. Mm -hmm. So I can do right. that. Shoot at a target and don't start a forest fire. Shoot I'm a rock. Those go. are usually not flammable. I'm going to take the rock that I was just trying to cast light on, and I'm going to go and put it on top of another rock. <laughs> and I'm going to cast Firebolt at it. All right. So there's one. And you said you can control flames. Can you play with the campfire a little bit? I'll go and cast control fire on it and make, like, little... A rough like fire dragon like serpent to go and slither around the uh, inside of the fire. All right. Well, have you found anything that isn't fire based? Because that can be a little one sided. I have not really tried. Hmm. I would assume now that uh, Tobor and I have deal that can cast that blast attack that uh, he had uh, that I had been able to cast with water. So I'm Give going to shot. Try, and, try and cast it at that same rock that I had set up before and blast it. Is our Eldritch Blast working now? I would say yes. Like it just probably destroyed your little pebble. It's a rock like about this big. <laughs> yeah, you did force damage to it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I have sand now. Okay. Oh, well, that's one I don't know. <laughs> but that's not in wizard school. Good enough. Oh, that's three. That's not bad. Um, ideally, there'd be some utility here you could learn. Hmm. There's message. Point at someone and whisper them a short message. Or we have um, given here, Cricket, I'll send you a message as you're reading. Try and freak you out a little bit. Hey, you want an egg? 
<laughs> just see Craig just like instantly bolt towards Tanithil. So that's how message works. Hmm. Here's your egg. <laughs> <laughs> I take well, my I'm... eggs very seriously, given you might be muted. Yes. There you are. <laughs> you were in the brain. She closed yes. her book and like ran fast. <laughs> I take my eggs very seriously, so I wouldn't ever offer you one in jest. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Fida, can teaching? you? Oh, yes, we're working on some simple magical tricks. I will try and cast message also to um, Cricket now that she seems to be uh, participating <laughs> in this. Ever be our guinea pig? She's just right. standing there, just looking at you guys, real, real amazed. <laughs> <laughs> and. will whisper to her um can you hear this yes <laughs> real loud <laughs> seems i can cast that one all right As... well oh sorry well yeah that that and mending would be my favorite utility things can you fix your rock go over and try and fix my rock and I'm going to fail miserably at fixing my rock because I cannot get spending. <laughs> I'll put the rock together to demonstrate. <laughs> that As... does not seem like something I can do. <laughs> As I, uh, uh, as Fida and Tenethel, as you guys are like trying to like learn all these different spells and you're kind of spending. Uh, Emerald, if I'm not mistaken, you stated that you were channeling energy into the skull <laughs> yeah <laughs> so okay. is just at the fire messing with the rabbits and probably chatting random conversation at Annathil's owl. Ah, uh, yes. It but not having the time to Sheldon. not having the time to uh, spend ten minutes every ten minutes to cast ritually speak with animals cannot understand it in return because busy cooking busy and cooking. cleaning and giving little bits here and there. So I would say that you guys do this for quite some time back and forth with the whole trial and error of the different spells. Soon we go through and I figure out my cantrip list. Yeah, your cantrip list. I would also say your first level spells. At yeah, least I mean, some of your them. Basic magical knowledge, I'll give you an arcana if you like, for how well I could help her figure out these spells. Yeah. I accidentally so, rolled it with advantage, but it's a 14. Fine, I mean... I would honestly gave you advantage because you know all this stuff. And 16. Because you're a nerd. Damn. You're a I'm nerd. Wizard. I'm nerdy enough that suddenly I can explode things. You spleen right. showing. So they take, I would say, probably a little over an hour just kind of like running through all these different spells. You can actually see that this is somewhat... It's... Mentally, exa uh, mentally exhausting after a while. You can see on the two of them uh, trying to cast through all these different spells and practice and show. And after a while, you can just see uh, like Vita and Tanta just kind of like finally just take a break and rest. Uh, I would say it's around 10 o'clock in the evening by this point. Actually, I would say more along the lines of 11. Who's taking first watch? <laughs> the beer is up if no one else is. Uh, Cricket will also take first watch as well. Cause... Okay. Mm-hmm. 
So Cricket and who also said? Sephira. Sephira. Stalker. Who's got, who's got second? Who's on third? I can do third and fourth. Alrighty. I'll do it for fourth. Okay. So for first watch, I need perception rolls. And by the way, fuck. Nice. Wise guy. Thank I also got boom. a natural 20. <laughs> Unnatural for me. Oh, I got a natural 20. Yes. Ayana has a boon. What? Aw. Wait, that might be wrong. Y'all's no, 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 that's right. watch goes rather uneventful. Occasionally, y'all hear the scurrying of a squirrel or a rabbit, the hoot of an owl in the distance. Nothing out of the ordinary. Y'all's two hours of watch go by, like I said, peacefully. Who's got second, if I'm not mistaken? It's... Emerald? No. <laughs> we have okay, already then. forgotten who was stated to be on second. That's nice. Nobody volunteered. Oh. I, don't, I didn't recall actually hearing anyone say a second watch. Second. <laughs> Alrighty then. Just let the alarms I mean, take it if something happens. <laughs> and your owl if your owl doesn't sleep. We're good. So? Yeah. Who had third? It's Tanithil. 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 Tanithil, you wake to find Stalker and Cricket just kind of resting. They kind of took that second watch more to resting. Uh pace. All right. So roll a perception. Perception for third watch. 21. It also goes rather uneventful. The, uh, but your meditation, how should I say, goes rather, uh, makes you do feel rather rejuvenated and just the watch itself is just kind of nice, calm to it. You just kind of like take a Take it all in for the evening. Yeah, I'm effectively fully rested already. Yep. Uh, Fida, if I'm not mistaken, you said you have fourth? Yep. Okay. I'm there as well. Ooh. Roll perceptions, you two. Nat one. Oof. <laughs> Eleven. Oh. So... Tanithil, as he's kind of like on his watch, he gets rather sidetracked in his books and is just kind of more focused in that area. You're more looking out, though, making sure nothing kind of tries to sneak up on the campsite as time kind of ticks by. After a while, the sun begins to rise, kind of shining through the trees. The morning fog just kind of like rolls in. I'd say it's around six in the morning. All right. Uh, t- well, wakey, wakey, everyone. There is no bakey, but there are eggs. <laughs> there are always <laughs> eggs. <Yes. laughs> Emerald's probably just sitting there thinking, thank God Tobor didn't show up. <laughs> Speaking of that, she looks to the Fida and asks, "Friend, arrive?" No, he has no reason to show up right now. He's off doing. Well, yes, he already got the deal. What would be so... other reason, other than deal? That's for him to know. I get the feeling we're kind of um. This world is fairly uh, boring for him. Is this the deal I heard the terms of when I first met him? Mm-hmm. So you just at one time, some time in the future, have to come to his calling? 
Um, yes, to help him go from full bar of the seventh hell to full bar of the eighth hell. Right. That one. Yes, you've got mm, yourself involved in the blood war. Could be worse, but you have too many <laughs> fire spells. <laughs> Shall we make the rest of our trip then? Yes. <laughs> so y'all pack up camp and essentially just proceed on back to Colden. And Sophia Stalker for her, you know, exercise since they're out and about with none of their stuff is either going to carry one of the party members or uh, just any big boulder or log or something she can find to give herself extra weight. Okay. I need perception rolls from oh, everybody. Oh boy. Alrighty. Meh. Hey, now it's a seven. Another unnatural <laughs> twenty. Eight. What the flip is with these rolls? <laughs> uh, Thirteen. Oh my goodness. Disappointed in Beta and Tanithil. What's wrong with you guys? Have y'all not had enough eggs? Roll 20, man. <laughs> I clearly have not had enough eggs here. Like, uh, there's an egg deficit happening with me right. here. No so, eggs. as <laughs> what's <Wet> guy, <laughs> Aaron, uh, you got two boons. Hey, all right. As you guys make y'all's way to Colden. Oh my god. Outskirts. <laughs> what? I, I rolled them in roll 20. I rolled a pair of 20s. This is never... This does not happen. <laughs> right? There's your 20s. This, this is another situation of me having all of my luck all at once. And so for each of those, I now roll twice and pick what I want. So I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll just do that on my own, and you can continue, I guess. Yep. Oh, man. As you guys make y'all's way to call them, Stalker, Emerald, y'all are the first ones to quickly notice as y'all get to the outskirts of the village that there are some buildings that are not the same. The Tiller House that was on the hill that overlooked the village that y'all had just been at the day before, is completely run down. The door, on the, uh, the front door itself is basically hanging on by a single hinge. Windows are busted out. The roof is partially caved in. The walls have vines growing up and over them. The uh, tavern inn of Elijah that y'all had stayed at, or at least visited the day before, from the outside, even looks run down. The windows are dirty. The door itself looks like it's, uh, the hinges are rusted, and the door itself looks as if it could use a nice fixer upper. You can see in the distance uh, Chris's farm. It's not as lush as it was the day before. Chris is out. Y'all do. I was going to say. Uh, you see an older gentleman off in the distance, because I would say that y'all are quite a distance away. An older gentleman, it seems, uh, chopping wood in the back of the inn of Elijah's. Off in the distance over at Chris's field, you can see someone tilling in the, uh, in the wheat. You do see other people kind of wandering about the village, and you see what appears to be, uh, Caravans, or not caravans, more or less, but wagons of some people passing through Colden itself. Some head towards Aston, and then others headed towards Creighton, in the opposite direction. Well, let's snag the first person we can get to and figure out what's going on. 
Emerald, what did what did the hag say? Now the town seems much worse. Did you ever find out the exact nature of the curse from them? Understandable. I take you, I'll find the uh, nearest person. Uh, a nobleman that's just kind of like passing through uh, the village. Uh, you all stop as his wagon is coming by you guys. I would, uh, who's going to be the one to try and flag this person down? I'll do it. So, Tantho, you just, you guys see Tantho just kind of like run out in front of Make his wagon. way up. Yeah, it makes its way up to the road and just kind of hold up his hands. The nobleman is sitting inside this, uh, sitting in the back of the wagon with the driver in the front. The driver just kind of pulls on the reins. And he's like, uh, careful there, sir. You can get yourself hurt. You better yet killed. Well, yes, I was hoping that wouldn't happen, but I, I need to talk to your passenger, please. The nobleman is just sitting there counting coins out of a bag, just kind of like turns and looks at Tanitha and just what would you what can I do to help I guess what's what's happening in this town we were here just yesterday and now everything seems much generally worse um much worse than what it already has been it's been like this for years ah uh, that's that's unfortunate how many it's very <laughs> Can I ask Hello. where you're headed? Ah, yes. Uh, I'm headed to the uh, town of Creighton. He's actually passing by you guys and actually heading towards... I'm oh, he's going into town. Mates. Yeah. Okay. I just left Aston. Uh, just trying to avoid the uh, raids that are going on there. This town gets hit quite a bit sometimes by them. Okay, well... Since they're not, since they're not that far. Person Not from really. the outside coming in. I'll take it. Stalker is pulling out her map to look at it. You actually do find Colden on the map. Hey. And you also find all the other uh, towns and locations that were previously marked. When you remember how, like yesterday, things were just kind of disappearing. Yeah, Colden is there. The circle Along with drawn on it is back and all that. Yep. Hmm. hmm. We should go check the stables for the horses. Mm hmm. Oh. Oh. Uh oh. As y'all mm -hmm. make y'all's way through the village, yeah. Uh, you find Chris, who's currently eating on a piece of meat, just kind of tilling in the fields. He's just like, as you guys are walking up, he just kind of like turns around. Yeah, there you go. No. There you are. I haven't seen y'all in, uh, I think, uh, two days now, it feels like. He just kind of like that. takes a piece of meat and puts it off to the side. He just kind of leans on the hoe that he was using to till the building. He's just like, were y'all able to find the location that y'all set off to go towards? He does look the same age. He's dirtier, not as well kept though as he was previously. He also he's just he's also skinnier. He's also doesn't have a pig with him. Okay. Where's bacon? Holds up a piece of meat. He goes, I cooked him three days ago. <laughs> Cricket gets visibly upset. Oh. Very, very upset. She does. Oh god, thank god. <laughs> she's yeah, she's gonna go through her little makeshift little fanny pack. 
Are you keeping a chick in a bag? <laughs> it's it's got seed in there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. Chris is just all my peace. He's like, I could pick him three days ago. Y'all were uh, y'all were here four. Y'all were here four days ago. I told y'all I was going to. Uh, yes, yes, of course. My condolences. Cricket actually gets into like a fighting stance. <laughs> <laughs> Have I upset the bird? She cares for all living things. Dad, my friend. No. If it's any consideration, Pakin did have offspring. He just kind of points to the round the back of the I don't have to still have an accent. <laughs> he points to the round the back of the farm and like he's like, you can check out the piglets, they're in the back. There's six of them to be exact. This space is out. <laughs> Maybe you should go look at the piglets. I gave him a heart. He turns to Stalker and just goes, but if it's any consideration, I did keep y'all stuff rather well safe. And he just points, uh, he just motions y'all and points towards the barn and just begins walking that direction. The y'all's stuff is still there, the horses and the wagon. All right. Do they look aged at all? No, it looks fine. This does not appear to be an aging effect, but rather by merging this village's timeline with the surrounding area, the village has been worse off, which is philosophically, honestly, quite terrible. We we may have done a bad thing. We should see what else has changed. Is the mansion still here? It, yeah. It's on the hill, I... but it looks... Terrible. Right. Like we've been ransacked. I think we we verified our possessions are still around. I think we should check out the mansion. I can't no. agree that it's worse, Tanathil. At least these people have their freedom now. Well, in a cage the size of the one they had many miles across that they aren't even aware of, is that worse than poor freedom? Yes. They couldn't even leave town. They did. Most of them just didn't have need to. We have Jonathan. But if they leave town, they forget the town. Ignorance is bliss as it is. Unless you leave some behind. It's not perfect, but... On the net, we may have made this situation worse. Possibly. Let's continue looking around. Mm hmm Shall we go to the mansion, then? Yes. As y'all make y'all's way across towards the mansion, y'all pass by the tavern inn that was Elisha's. Y'all can see through the window that the windows are smudgy from dirt and grime. You can see a older gentleman that's just kind of cleaning up the bar and a woman that's at the bar itself that's wiping it down. She's older herself. They both look to be in their uh, early 50s just cleaning it up. As y'all, I guess, keep pressing towards the mansion. Okay. As y'all get there, and y'all kind of get up there and look past the door. The door itself, like I was saying, is basically on a single hinge. Inside, there's tables and chairs that have all been turned over. You can see brown stains that litter all over the floors from basically the front door all the way through the back. You see railings of the stairs have been broken, cracked. Stairs themselves have even been cracked themselves and split. 
you find furniture broken, legs or, uh, broken off of couches. Leaves have scattered the flooring all throughout. It's got a rather moldy, musky smell filled in the air. As y'all kind of walk through everything, y'all notice that items are missing, gone. The room given cricket that you were just in the day before doesn't have any books. Emerald, the room that you were able to you saw a sorted of treasures, one of a black staff with interesting uh, scripture or script on it, and the orb is missing. That room itself is also completely barren, minus a sword and a bow. You see in the walls, there's arrows actually kind of protruded in or protruding out and stuck in as if someone had shot. It's completely ransacked. I'll ritual cast a detect magic, see if there's anything remaining in here. Nothing. Well, do we still have the amulet taken directly from Jonathan? I'm going to hold it up. And, still has yes, it on. I still have it on. We get checks in her books. So everything those, else is those from do outside light the village. Up. We still yeah, have those. Yeah, those do light up. Nothing inside the house, though. Right. Nothing outside of each of our persons. Hmm. Well, I I wonder if Jonathan has simply been removed from this village's history altogether. Or if he hasn't been here for a very long time. Good question. We should go and check on the church, the tavern. See they what else probably has changed. Tell us. Yes. They tell us. As y'all leave the mansion and head towards the church, the church is in okay shape compared to some of the other folk. Yes, Emily. Yeah. Door still there, teetering. Silent. <laughs> as y'all guys make y'all's way towards the church it's an okay standing compared to the mansion and chris's farm the windows aren't the cleanest but it's an all right shape as you guys kind of enter in you see uh reverend just on the far end just reading through his book as he, you guys come in he's just like, oh, visitors I wasn't quite expecting. No one really comes uh, anymore. It's been quite some time. What can I do for y'all? Oh. Yeah. The same man that we talked to the day previous. I apologize. I had a moment of lapse as a DM. I apologize. Oh, brain fart. Uh, brain fart. Yeah. Right. Uh, okay. As he kind of like does one of those quick looks up and downs real quick, he wasn't really paying too much attention, but as he again look up, he actually notices y'all. It's just like, oh, I apologize. And it's not us. It's not strangers. How are we all doing this? Uh, well, it's still early morning.
I gave that. I gave that to y'all a couple of days ago. Y'all were inquiring about that when y'all went to go uh, investigate the old Tiller Mansion. We fell really hard and hurt head. We forgot. That happens uh, occasionally. All of us. Uh, uh, yep. Well, uh, it's like I told y'all. It's been about six years since the town or the village was raided due to uh, Jonathan Tiller and his, how should we say, uh, poor expeditions that he likes to occasionally go on. Town's not been the same since. No one comes to the church. He just kind of like looks up and looks around. Uh, Elijah's parents, they have not been the same. They hardly keep up with the tavern. His parents? Yeah. Where's Elijah? Y'all... Y'all already know that answer. Y'all stayed with... She stayed at the end for three days. Refresh our memory, maybe? Yes, I didn't get the story of what happened to him. He maybe passed this six one. years ago in the raid. Hmm. Has Teller been here since the raid? Teller died along with his family. The raid came uh, down through from the hill, passed right by his house, and he just swept through the village. I told you all this, like I said. Yes, we're, we're sorry for the repeated questions. Just trying to get a full picture of the village's history. Well, it's like I was telling you, uh, he left 